the Living Word Podcast. This is Pastor Derek Thomas. And as I said in our previous broadcast, we're starting a new format for our podcast. And the format is going to be spoken to from the platform of an I know standpoint. In court, a witness is defined as one that both the prosecution and the defense vie for. And their stories are designed to paint a picture that the jury believes. And what we strive to do with this podcast moving forward is to take testimonies of brothers and sisters that know Christ and that have had experiences with Christ that have changed their lives. And we're blessed to have with us again today uh, one of our very own members from from Living Witness Ministries, our brother Bernard Hawkins. Uh, Truly, he's been a blessing to me since I've met him. And if you heard his testimony, you truly know that angels truly walk with this man. So, Brother Bernard, welcome to the podcast today, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pastor Thomas. Thank you. You're very, very welcome. We we appreciate you, and I, I appreciate you personally as as a member, but more importantly, as an individual, as a man, because you embody all that a living witness truly is and all that God desires us to be today as living witnesses. So we do appreciate you. Now, last week we talked about we talked about the angels that were unaware that 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 ministered to you and your brother. And in talking to you further, you began to share a story with me that I want you to kind of, you know, go into this week. And for those of you that are following along, I want you to think about Jesus with the man that was at the pool of Siloam. And if you remember that story very briefly, you remember that the man at the pool of Siloam was blind and what Jesus did, he didn't have medical marvels at his disposal. He didn't have uh, uh, laser surgery. He didn't have LASIK. He didn't have any of those things. What he had was the anointing in him and a willingness to do as God says. And, and God of all things led Jesus to, to, to make uh, little mud pies and put on the man's eyes and told him to go wash in, in the pool of Siloam. So, so I'll stop right there. And I want you, uh, Brother Bernard, just, just share a little bit, if you would, about what God did for you. Okay, well, I was at the age of around six years old. Mm-hmm. Um, we lived in the country. Now, my mother loved the Lord with all her heart and soul. She really did. She prayed all the time. She kept us in church all the time. So, And I know things that happened to me were because of my mother and others, but I know my mother. Praise God. Yes. yes. So, so anyway, we were little bad children in the country. And uh, we had, we, we got cap pistols, like most little guys got. Mm-hmm. So we watch television and we see the cowboys and Indians. Now, the cow, the cowboys had the cap pistol, like I said, but we had learned to take a Coca Cola top, mm-hmm. and we get a, a stick, just a stick. I, uh, I forget what type of wood it was. We break it, and then we wrap that Coca Cola top around the end of that stick, and then we get another stick and cut slice off bicycle inner tubes and make a bow. Mm-hmm. So the Indian actually had a real weapon. <laughs> wow. And we used to take them and pull them back and shoot them in the air. And sometimes those things would go so far up in the air that you couldn't see it for a minute. I mean, it was it was a real weapon. Hmm. So th- we take turns playing cowboy. I did cowboy, and then the cousins would be the Indian, and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Well, this this particular day, I was the cowboy with a cap pistol. Mm-hmm. My cousin was the Indian with a real weapon. Mm-hmm. So now we, my father was adding on to the house, so there was a room that hadn't been finished and so we played around that because some of the the, 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 the foundation beams were still open they hadn't been it hadn't been completed but my cousin was around a corner and had that weapon pulled back mm. and I'm I'm the cowboy so I'm trying to find him and just as I went around the corner of that building he had that thing cocked pulled back and he released it and it hit me right in my left eye. Mm. And that's that, that's the last thing I remembered. I was out cold. Wow. So when, when I came to, I was in the hospital. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, so they did whatever they did to me. And I stayed in the hospital for, for, for a few weeks. And I remember when they released me, they had put a patch over that eye. And I couldn't see out of it. it, was, it was, I was actually blind in it. And I remember him telling me and my mother, he said, now, We've done all we can do for him. Say now, what you do is each day. It was in the summertime. He said you take that patch and put it up, and let that eye get some sunlight. And said so he may get his sight back and he might not. 
So that was it. But my mother continued praying, man. So one particular day, I'm sitting on that on that part on that beam that was exposed on the part of the house that my father was still building on. I'm just sitting there, just sitting there with a the patch up, getting some sun, like I was told to do. Mm-hmm. And so all of a sudden, I heard something tapping behind me, like somebody was knocking on that wood. Hmm. So now the, the the, the next part to this pastor is really hard to believe, but God knows I'm telling the truth. Mm-hmm. So I, I turned I turned to see what was making this noise, and I saw a long green grasshopper. Really? Sitting on that wood too, just looking in my direction. Hmm. And so as I looked at it, I heard it say like that. It spit. Mm-hmm. And I saw brown juice come from his mouth. And it landed right into that blind eye that I had to patch up on it. Wow. And it scared me. And so I closed my eye and I jumped down off the thing and I ran to my mother. Mom, mom. She said, what's the matter, son? I said, mom. I said, a grasshopper spit in my eye and it's burning. Hmm. And, she, and she said, son, don't come in here with stories like that. Don't come in here with stories like that. I said, mom, I'm not lying to you. And so she held my face up, and she looked, and she saw that brown juice come out of my eye. And she mm-hmm. said, I remember her saying, what in the world is this? Hmm. So so she went, and she had a small pot, and she got some cool water. And mm-hmm. she held my face up. She opened my eye, and mm-hmm. she pulled that water to get that brown juice out of my eye. Mm-hmm. And then she dried it. And so when she took the towel away from my eye, I opened it, and I looked. And I said, Mom, you said, what, baby? I said, I can see. Hmm, my God. She said, she said, what? I said, Mom, I can really see. My God. So, so she took her hand and she put it over my good eye and she held up a little piece of paper. And she said, read this, son. And I read it. And when I read it, my mom fell to her knees on the floor. Hmm. And she began crying and worshiping God and thanking him. My God. My God. He, re- he restored my sight, Pastor. And that is the heavenly, that's God's truth. Praise God. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. Truly, we serve, we serve such a mighty God. And there, there were yes, so many things, so many things that you said here that, that could be expounded on in so many ways. And I just want to look at them very, very quickly um, just to help our listeners understand and know the, the power and the might of the God that we serve. Yes. Uh, you, you, you really hit on where we all are from the outset. You, you said that, that, that we were all bad kids. And, and, you know, and that's true. We all are. The word says that, that for we all like sheep that have gone astray. And, and yes. I mean, if we, when you stop and really think about it, and, and, and if you choose to, please speak about that. We, we've all, like sheep, gone astray. Yes. But God doesn't give up on us. He still loves us enough to not only pursue us, but to also provide for us while he's in pursuit of us. Yes. You know? Yes. Yes, Pastor. I mean, it's 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 something I, I hear your story and I, I hear what, what, what you're deeming is, is, is bad. And I think about, you know, my own childhood. I, you know, we I never did anything like that. Um, you know, I, I grew up in the city. Okay. But we got into stuff, and we got rambunctious, and sticks were a part of it. That's just what boys do. Yes, you know, and it was it was interesting that you said with with that stick, basic with, with with the Indian, you built. You all were calling it a bow and arrow, but really it was a slingshot. You know, it was yeah. really a slingshot, <laughs> and yeah. it's significant if you look in the words. You know that there's somebody that used a slingshot. David and uh, yes, sir, yes, sir, and David yes, used sir. that slingshot, and, and and David did some mighty things with. That slingshot. Yes, he did. But yes, even with that, you know, David was, a, was would have been classified as a bad kid because we know, you know, uh, what what he did uh, concerning uh, Bathsheba. But even in yes. the midst of that, and this is where I take such joy, and even as I listened to your testimony, I, I thought about all this. At the end of the day, when you went to the Hall of Fame of Faith, you know, and they started talking about the Hall of Fame of Faith in Hebrews eleven. David was still numbered, and, and he was not called just David, but he was called a man after God's own heart. Yes, he was, Pastor. And yes. that's that's something that I really pray that, you know, our, 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 our listeners get 
that hear not only this testimony but but your testimonies that that these are the sharings the, the the testimonies of a man after God's own heart doesn't mean that we're flawless doesn't mean that it you that you're flawless that any of us are flawless we've all yes. missed it the Bible talks about it for all the sin to come short of the glory of God yes pastor but it's because of his mercy that we're not consumed you know and and God desires to slingshot all of us back from from obscurity into victory we just got to understand that in order to get there we, we're being pulled you know yes and it, it's it's I, I thought I heard you loud and clear when you talked about the weapon you said that you know the cowboys had a toy but the Indians had a weapon yes yes and you're right and and you experienced firsthand what damage that weapon can do but Going back to what you said about all of us being bad kids and going back to the, what the word says, that like sheep we've all gone astray and understanding that God leaves the 99 to go get the one. Yes. That weapon that was formed that didn't prosper and do what it could have done. Amen, Pastor. Amen, Pastor. Yeah, it really didn't because, I mean, you spoke on what it could have done. You said you said what the doctor said. Yes. If I'm not mistaken. And, and the doctor yes. said, if I heard you correctly, that... You know, there's a chance he could get his sight back, but there's a very real chance that he couldn't, that he may not. That's right. That's right. You know? And one thing I've learned about medicine is that medicine relies so heavily on man-made knowledge. Yes. That there's very little room for for God. That's right. That's right, Pastor. But it's so interesting, you know, because... At the end of the day, when acts of God happen and they can't come up with a, with an ex explanation, they're quick to say, well, it, it had to be a miracle. It, yes. It had to be a, be a miracle. And and you, sir, are a miracle. You're, you're a walking, yes. talking miracle because, yes. you know, yes. that, 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 that grasshopper, which basically is the comparison that I used when I talked about Jesus at the Pool of Siloam, that grasshopper was the unlikely conduit that God chose to use. Amen, bro. Amen, Pastor. I mean, and it's like Amen. You know, you I we we've talked so many times, you know, outside of settings like this and, and we've talked about, you know, how God moves and how God blesses. And as as I think about some of the conversations that that we've had, you know, uh culminating in this one thus far, I think about the passage of scripture that says that that, that God takes the foolish things of this world. You know, to confound the wise. He takes the things that the make absolutely no sense. Who in their right mind, heck, who in their left mind, if it's, it's who in their, any aspect of their mind would, <laughs> yes, yes. would think that a, a grasshopper, of all things, a grasshopper. Would, would restore sight. And a grasshopper is spitting of all things. I mean, yes. That's one of the nastiest things that you can do. Yes. You know? And for a grasshopper to have supernatural aim to hit a kid in the eye, Yes, yes. You know, yet God takes the foolish things of this world, i.e., take some of this mud off the banks here and put it across somebody's eyes and then tell somebody that's been blind since birth. Yes. To go wash. Ooh, ooh. And there's so many ways to look at it. It's like, okay, you telling me to go wash. Excuse ooh. me, I hate to be a bother, but I can't see. So how do you propose I get to the water without falling and breaking my neck? So, Amen. So, so even with that, and speaking back to your situation, even with that, God was at work. He he was he was at work in the midst of your your, your testimony, and and, and he yes. was at work in the midst of what was happening. And God's yes. grace was was on display. He yes. was on display because when you went, the burning was there. And we 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 say that the the, the burning. I say the burning was the interpreted interpreted as that it's the anointing and the movement of God in the midst of that situation. Taking yes, that foolish pastor. thing and doing the miraculous, and when your mom washed, you know, you became an, an embodiment mm -hmm. of, of, of amazing grace. Mm -hmm. You did, you know, you mm -hmm. were blind, but but at that moment you saw, and that could, that that's a precursor for all of our lives. I mean, we've all had those experiences where we we knew we were done for. Yes, you know, we knew we were done for, but you know. God stepped in and, and, and moved in the miraculous and took an impossible situation and did a miracle. He took a situation where 
you should not have had you you shouldn't have your site right and not only do you have your site you have 2020 vision 2020 you know, vision 20, 20, 20 vision 2020 so you, you vision can't, you can't tell me that, that god is not able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or even think you can't tell me that that god's <laughs> power isn't at work in the lives yes. of your of, in the lives of the people Yes, yes. And I mean, I, I really pray that that people gain clarity and people gain understanding. I mean, if if you could appeal to somebody listening today and, and, and really appeal to them for the takeaways, what, what would you, sir, say that the takeaways are from this this testimony? And there's so many more. I mean, listeners, there are so many more. We're, we're just getting started. But what would the takeaways be, uh, Brother Bernard, that you that you share with somebody? One thing, Pastor, that stays in my mind on this is, is, is so like you touched on it. In your darkest time, when you don't see any any way out. Yes. You call on the name of the Lord. Yes. And you have faith. And he'll see you through, Pastor. Yes, sir. He will see you through. Yes. He'll bring your darkness into the light. Hmm. He will make the blind see. Yes. He can make the cripple walk, mm. and, and he can make the dumb talk. Yes, yes. Sir. I have no doubt, Pastor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I, I think that sometimes we're not healed mm -hmm. be, because we don't believe. Mm. That's true. And, that, that's, and that's, part true. Of the, that's part of the formula, Pastor. Yes, sir. It is. It is. You know, the Bible talks about faith. <laughs> being the substance of things hoped for and it being the evidence Amen. of things not seen. And, and, Amen. and I say, I, I'm saying now as I'm getting older and, and gaining more wisdom because I'm, I'm really living it even the more that faith isn't what one sees. Faith is what ultimately one believes. Amen. And, and that's the key. And, and, and that's really the, the touchdown point with your testimony. Yes. It's not about what you see, but it's about what you believe. Amen. You are a living witness of God stepping into a situation that man had decreed defeat in. Yes. And you have a testimony of God saying no to man's no to you. Yes. That's a testimony, and nobody can take that away from you. Nobody can alter or debate the fact because you went to the doctor and the doctor gave verification that you had 2020 vision. Or have, yes. I should say, 2020 vision. 2020 20, vision. 2020 vision. Yes, he did. And, and, and how young of a man are you, sir? <laughs> I'm 69 years old now, Pastor. The, praise <laughs> God. So, so folks, this is a man that is 69 years old. Yes, I am. I'm not 69 years old, and I need and I need cheaters to help me read. This man has 20, <laughs> 20 vision, not by uh, might nor by power, but by God's spirit. He has 20, 20 vision. God did it. God did, did it. God did it. Yes, sir, he did. And and God did just it. just as God did it for him, brothers and sisters that are listening, God can and will do it for you. He desires to bless you with. 2020 spiritual vision yes. that 2020 spiritual vision only comes if you say yes to him if you say, only if you say yes to him brother Bernard, I, I want to thank you for thank your you. testimony i want to thank you for your uh, uh fervor and for your desire to share i want to thank you for being what we as a church are aspiring to be and that's being a living witness day in day out in real time of what a believer looks like so we thank and praise god for you sir and we thank and praise god for your testimony and again to be continued this this isn't the end folks this is just the beginning i mean amen you i'm telling you if you if you desire to have your faith exercised, if you desire to grow in boldness, if you desire to be encouraged, I need you to stay tuned. Stay with us here on the Little Word uh, Podcast because we're just getting started and we're here to truly make a difference as we truly strive to reach the world with the life-giving word. Amen. Amen. Until Amen. next time, Brother Bernard, thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. And, and God bless everyone. 
Living Witness Ministries has been given a mandate to go into all the world and reach the same with the life-giving word. In this phase of our development, God is doing so through the ushering in of the Abandon No More initiative. Through this campaign, God is using Living Witness Ministries to reach the whole man in major urban communities in order to help them realize and see that God has not forgotten them and neither has his church. Our first endeavor in this initiative is in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, by obtaining a ministry campus in the Hampton Heights neighborhood. With this ministry campus, we're looking to establish holistic programs that impact every sector of the community, including the Living Witness Christian Academy, the a and Neighborhood Watch Program, the Feed My Sheep Community Food Pantry, the Provision Community Center and Beds Program, the a and Economic Empowerment and Wealth Center, the Kirkendall Community Health Center, the a and Community Beautification Campaign, and the Lark and Lee Community Service Program. Won't you help us in our endeavor to practically reach this portion of the world with the life-giving word? Please sow into Living Witness Ministries Capital Building Fund. You can do so through our existing modes of giving, including Cash App at dollar sign LW Ministries 2020, Tithely or Givelify at Living Witness Ministries LaGrange, Illinois, or by mail at P.O. Box 250769, Milwaukee, Wisconsin 53225. Please do your part as the Lord leads you to help us acquire this property so that we can be the blessing that God has called us to be in Milwaukee, but more importantly, so that we can fulfill our God-given mandate in this phase of ministry to possess the land in Milwaukee, one soul at a time, for God's glory. Thank you in advance for your support, and God bless. pray that you were blessed by today's broadcast and would love to hear from you. If you have any prayer requests, praise reports, or would like to learn more about Living Witness Ministries, you can contact us by email at livingtowitness at gmail.com. That's the word living, the number two, witness at gmail.com, or by phone at area code 404-955-8846. Again, that's area code 404-955. 8846. Until next time, we encourage you to continue to live your life as a living witness.